All right. Hey, greetings. Those of you that are here in person for another night of Bible study on the book of Genesis, and those of you that are joining us online, we are so glad for all of you being here and being online with us. And uh, we're going to pray, and then my wife's going to come lead us in a song, and we'll get started. All right. Father, we just come right now, Lord, and we. Uh, God, would you say that, Lord, we open up our hearts and our ears to hear from you tonight, God, what your word declares. God, that we might know the truth. And God, that that truth, Lord, would reside in us. And God, that we might have that answer when someone asks the question, to be able to give the correct answer. Father, we pray for those that are unable to be with us tonight, God, those that are sick in their bodies and need healing, minister to them, God, in the name of Jesus, touch and make whole, Father, in Jesus' name. We give you all praise and all glory tonight. <laughs> amen and amen. amen. Come on, Sister Susan, and lead us in the song. Good evening. So <clears throat> do our hearts long for God? So how, how do they do that? Kind of as the mere tenants of the water. So. As the So I think we should be going into the third day of creation. On the third day, question number four, on the third day, God created. Don't remember. I, I hear some correct answers and some don't remember. So on the third day, Remember, God's already created and spoke into existence earth, and earth is there, but it's just water at this juncture. So on the third day, it says that God created dry land, the earth, and the sea. So he created that separation. We get to Genesis chapter 1, verse 9, it says, And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place. So we gathered that water that's in the firmament and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas, and God saw that it was good. Again, 
He's happy with what he created. Now, what is interesting is out of water, here's all this water on earth, he then creates dry land. What's the human body? <laughs> the majority of the human body is what? Water? Okay. So it's, it's, it's kind of interesting. He, he did this. He separated the waters to create dry land or cause that land to come up out of that water and, uh, and to be present. When you look at the 11th verse, and it says, And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good, and the evening and the morning then were the third day. Yes, David. I know I've been reading the scriptures. I find it ironic. You know, even today, even people we may disagree with on a lot of issues, we can all agree that God is the one that named this planet still. He called it Earth, and that's what we call it today still. And so I don't have to see how these people can still believe that there is a God and that He created all this when this the scrolls and all that have been found. And it's, it just kind of blows me away that He called it Earth, and that's what it is. And uh, what's kind of interesting, I don't know why, but it's saying we're having slow internet. But what's kind of interesting is that God created, uh, here he goes, he creates dry land, then he creates trees and grass. What do, what do trees and grass do? They put out oxygen. Yeah, they create the oxygen for the atmosphere, right? By taking in carbon dioxide. Well, I'm wondering if... What else does grass do? Go ahead, Dave, get your thought. No, I'll come back Well, I was just saying, you know, when they did all this trees and give off oxygen, and they talk about global warming. You know, they destroyed a lot of this earth by removing trees and plus the wildfires and stuff. You look at the Amazon now, I mean, they, for, for timber and wood, they have cleaned out a large portion of what used to be the Amazon forest. If you, if you ever... The rainforest? Yes. And that stuff gives off oxygen, man. You know, I, I think... Later on in Revelation, I think it gets pretty hot. It's pretty hot. <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying from what I from what I read, it is probably be looking hard to breathe. Yeah. People know? in Texas and California might be telling you right now it's getting pretty hot. But, <laughs> but, but hey, you know, think about this. So once he once he creates land. Then he creates grass. What's grass do? Okay, well, yeah, that's good. Feeds animals. Yes. Stops erosion. Yeah. Yeah, it holds the dirt. What he that he you know he put in place. He holds that dirt in place. Think about it. God, God knew what he was doing, and then he creates a tree, and. Every, I mean, almost every tree creates some kind of seedling 
of its of its kind to, to reproduce and produce another tree. Now the fruit tree, the fruit trees that are out there, they produce that seedling so that it's inside of that piece of fruit. Mm -hmm. So you have something that you can eat. And so even before God even created man, he was already thinking, hey, I'm gonna create fruit trees so they will have something to eat. And nowhere in here does it say, nowhere in here does it say anywhere that this was only done for the Garden of Eden. Go ahead, sister. On the right, it says grasses prevent erosion, hold water, and feed livestock. Yeah. Like that's true. Absolutely. <clears throat> so uh, I assume that God's design was to make man just eat vegetables and fruits at the beginning. Yeah, but yeah. I'm getting cheaper. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, I don't, I don't ever get any kind of meat. According to Ken, fruits, vegetables, and nuts. Yeah, according huh? to Ken, fruits, vegetables, and nuts. Oh, Which? Okay. Ken Ham's the one that did the nuts yeah. off. It, it, yeah. Well, flood we were vegetarian. Yes. Very well. Yeah. Well. They, that's a that's a good point. I will I will point out to you. Uh, you can, if you're looking for good answers in research, Ken Ham is a, a very good source. Ooh. And you, Ken, Ken Ham. Ham. Just like it says, H A M. Yes. Ken Ham. Yes, he created the Creation Museum. He created the Creation Museum in Kentucky and the Ark. Uh, encounter in Kentucky. Both of those are his, his uh, enterprises or doings. But he also has a lot of that teaching online through YouTube. Uh, there you can find the Genesis Answers. Uh, you can you can re review some stuff in there, look at stuff. It's very good. Um, things like that. There's he has good teaching. He's, he's he. Uh, H A M M, mm. I believe. In yeah. fact, may, some of you may not know, but it were a few years back, I watched it online. But Ken Ham debated Bill Nye, the Science Guy, oh, at the Creation Museum Auditorium. Really? Yes. You could even look and, that and up. Bill Nye isn't a real science guy. He's. <laughs> oh no, he was not. So it, it was good. It was a really good in, uh, debate. So Ken had a good I don't know. Oh, yeah. That's it. Yeah. I don't know if he's a vegetarian. I don't know. Uh, what we don't know is, you know, that's that's it. <laughs> that's an opinion of Ken M. We don't know. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna look at things as we go down the line here. Uh, when we, when we get a little further into Genesis, that may not leave you with that same thought process. So we'll discuss that as we get there, but it's not in this lesson. I have a question. Yes. So did he do this over the entire earth? Did he plant these or cause these trees to come about and grass to come about for the entire earth? Yes. Okay. That is really awe-inspiring. To think that in one day, you know, he covered the earth, the dry land. But, and and that's a lot to do. And I realize a day could not be our day. Right. But that's a lot to do in a day. <laughs> Absolutely. And think of this. That when you were saying that this thought came to my mind. Because he, he did that because he knew man was going to mess up. No. Well, that just came to my mind. I'm prepared. Well, I would say that's what I'm prepared. You know, and uh, Brother Dennis and I were just talking about this last week the comparison of a couple of the local reservoirs. And the dramatic difference between Pomona Reservoir and Melbourne Reservoir, and how one of them 
is almost always muddy looking mm -hmm. and one of them is almost clear looking. Mm -hmm. And the difference being is if you are around Pomona, a lot of that is, is farmland that's being cropped. You have erosion that comes into the lake. It's, it's built in a lot faster. Um, when you get down around Melbourne, you don't see as many crops. It's more pasture land. Mm -hmm. And so that water has less erosion running through grass to get into the lake. Yeah. And the grass will act as a filter. Yep, acts as a filter. Mm -hmm. In fact, that's, that's one of the bigger issues that they've discussed here in Kansas, not just at um, you know, those lakes, but other lakes, Perry, Clinton, a, a lot of them have silted in a lot because we are not taking good care of the soil. And so they dug it out, but now it's silted back in and started to fill these lakes up. So they don't hold as much water as they once originally did. Yes. Well, we, that's in another lesson that I really want to get to down the road. But. <laughs> Things for man, for man to, to partake of. And it wasn't until the law that there were specific things that he said, no, you can't partake of. Okay? So, and that's just my opinion. Remember that. So on the fourth day then, what did God create? So, remember, up till now, very good answer. Mary's done her homework, I tell you. So on the fourth day, God created the sun, a greater light, and the moon, a lesser light. And I, I actually call that really it's a reflection. And you look at all of the stars that are out there. Um, you look at Genesis 1, 14, it says, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. And he made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness and God saw that it was good and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. So up till now we have not had light upon the earth created by the sun. But we got but we've got trees and grass. They're being they're being uh, going through photosynthesis from the light, the light of God. It's his life. So I, That's what was the light of the day. Of the day. Yeah. yeah. So when they, he's talking about a day, they, we're not necessarily talking about our days. It's right. his day. So, I mean, would it be, would we have any take on that? We do. So, is it worth it? And we're, and we're going to get to some of that discussion. Oh, okay. <laughs> Everybody wants to jump in. Uh, Sorry. That's okay. But, but, uh, uh, Rick's going to get to that, but there is many different interpretations on that. Yes. As well as what, what Adam and Eve were eating before the fall. Okay. So, um, so, but back to the back to where we're at. Yes. Let's think about this one. So, can you imagine what it would be like if you went outside after the sun went down and there were no other stars 
or anything else in the sky for reflection of any of that light back to Earth. Total darkness, right? That's that's a that would be scary, very scary. And think about think about this. So for eons. People use these stars for navigation to travel at night, including most all of those sailors. They knew where the constellations were to be at and how to guide their self and their ship. I need to be headed this way because that's where Orion's belt's at, you know? Or I need to head this way because that's that's where the this star's at, the North Star or whatever. You know, they they were guiding themselves by those stars and we got the reflection when you go out at night and after the sun's gone down we get the re reflection of the sun off the moon back to us and when it's a full moon it's pretty easy to see outside you can see a lot and so we get this we get this added benefit of lights in the dark and what's really bizarre when you start to think about all of these is that when you begin to look at earth and our solar system it's a very small piece of the galaxy that we're in the milky way galaxy right it's a small piece of that and then when you look when you look at that, the, the galaxy is like this. But then when you look at the entire universe of galaxies and stars, it's beyond comprehension. We're just a little bitty speck of our solar system in all of that. And out of all of that, the first two planets in our solar system, they say our uh, surface temperature of around 800 to 900 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm, I don't think that would work very well. Okay? None of the other planets have water that we are aware of. They don't have the seas that are evident by what we've sent out to take pictures of. Most of the other planets are made up of Lots of other gases, not the same type of things that are required for human life support. We're perfectly situated, and the earth, earth is, you know, the earth doesn't sit straight up and down. We have, we have an equator, and we think, we think of it like the equator is flat like this. Well, the truth is, is the Earth sits on an axis like this. It's tilted at just the right particular tilt so that we get the proper seasons. We don't get too hot, we don't get too cold, except in the far extremes of both poles. Or both poles. Okay? To me, that just begins to, to blow my mind God knew exactly how to situate it, how to put it. He knew we needed water. He knew we were going to need plant life. He knew we were going to need fruit. All of these things. He put all of this into play because he knew, he knew that this was going to be a necessity for us to survive. And he hasn't even brought man into earth yet. So we had an idea of what he wanted man to be like before he ever, ever even decided to create it. Absolutely. He just said that he knew that man was needing food and then deep water. He changed his mind any other way. He might never have had that food and water. 
Well, we would have had to have uh, existed on something. Well, but he could have managed to know what we didn't need to. That's true. But that would create a whole other set of issues. Now, like if you look at trees and plants, they get their energy from the sun and water and nutrients out of the soil. And, and there's a whole... We blinked. Yeah, I know. We blinked. I don't know why, but we did. Sorry. So I don't know... Um, lost my train of thought there for a second. So, so I guess the, the, the thought process is, is yes, God knew exactly what he was going to do. We don't, we don't know a whole lot. There's still a whole lot about how things take place in trees and plants and grass that we don't really even know all of yet. We don't know all those answers yet. And, and the studies have been going on for a long time. But we don't have all those answers yet. So is God over all of the universe? I mean, it's everything, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. But do we, do we not get, I mean, outside of our solar system, do we not see other stars? Yeah. Right? We do. And they help light the way as well, right? Okay. What are you saying? <laughs> do we have a, could there be light in somewhere else? Well, there could be, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> you know, all I know is that God created God created this earth <laughs> and where we're at for a specific purpose. Okay. I have another thought. Okay. Yeah. I saw in the news this afternoon that millions, and they call them new stars, have been discovered. And they found old stars in the midst of the new stars. Could be a good answer. <laughs> or, or let me ask you, do you think it's possible when you when you say they've found new stars that were visible and able to detect amongst the old being I mean we now have the uh, the I want to, we have the Hubble telescope and then we have the, the, it's the new one, West yeah the West uh, uh, the James West James West I knew I knew it was I've been reading about James James I always want to say Adam West but James <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. different same time same day uh, but uh, but yeah, the James West, yeah. the James West telescope is now bringing up pictures of stuff that's yeah. absolutely amazing. They're getting pictures of nebulas and all kinds of things that are out there. But he knew all of this well in advance of what we were going to need to survive and what what was going to be needed for man. <laughs> so let's go to the fifth day. Here we go. So now we, we're going to move to the fifth day. On the fifth day, God created creatures that live in the sea and have birds that fly. 
Very good. So on the fifth day, God created the whales, the fish, and the birds. So fish have been around longer than man. Yeah. Mm. Birds have been around longer than man. Genesis 1.20, and God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl that might fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it, was good. that it was good. Again, he's pleased, he's happy. And 122, Genesis 122, and God blessed them. First time we see that, God He tells them he tells them be fruitful multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let fowl multiply in the earth and the evening and the morning were the fifth day so now we get the instruction what? Listen to this and understand this. God's blessing the fish and the fowl of the air and the whales. And then he's telling them, he's speaking to them, be fruitful and multiply. So apparently God talks to all of his creation. Probably. You know, like, you see dolphins as well, and how they can do that. Okay. changed its digestive processing to be more like a sturgeon, I guess, or a 
Spoonbill. Carnivores. Well, they are carnivores now, but you know, I don't know. That's a good question. What do you What do you think? Yeah. Okay. God made us created them for food. You may have. What's the old saying? If you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day, but if you teach him to fish, he's feed himself for a lifetime. All right, let's go to the sixth day. On the sixth day, God created everything else. The leftovers. The everything. Yeah. <laughs> Everything, yeah, everything else. The animals. So, the sixth day it says that God created the cattle, the creepy things, uh, beasts, men, including women. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> he created men and women. So they tell me that there were men and women before Adam and Eve were created. No. How do you get that out of what he just read? Well, on the sixth day, say God created cattle, creepy things, beasts, and men, including women. Yes. Women is plural. Women's plural. Yes. Woman is not. Man. Well, men's plural also. Man is plural. Man is plural. Man and woman. Man, uh, woman. People. 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 Human. Homo sapiens. Peoples. Peoples. So, when you. So it says it, it says it resumed. So when you start to look at this, what happens is from the ground, the bodies of birds, animals, and man were formed. Okay, out of what? The dust of the earth. Out of the dust of the earth. The basic elements of matter in the earth are the same materials found in the physical bodies. And when death came into the world, God said, because from it. The ground you were taken, for you were dust, and to dust you shall return. That's Genesis 3.19. So, when we start to look at these first six days, in the first three days, God brought forth order. God is a God of order. And the first day, he brought the separation of darkness and light even though he hadn't even created the sun yet. So he created separation. The second day, the second day God created separation of waters from the waters or the firmament. The third day, it says God created separation of land from the waters. Creating land, including plant life. So in the first three days, we find separation that brings order. That's what happens in those first three days. When we get to the next three days, God's voice brings forth life. On the fourth day, it says, fourth day, suns and stars are created. Fifth day, living creatures, birds and fish. Sixth day, animal life and man. Okay? That's what happens on the next three days. When we look at Genesis 1.24, it says, And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth after his kind, and it was so, and God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw 
that it was good. I'm still trying to figure out anything that creepeth how it was good. Yeah, real. <laughs> Creepy crawlers. I haven't figured that one out yet. And I haven't got a good answer. But out of all of this, God said that he created his kind, cattle, and the creeping thing, and the beast of the earth after its kind. So God created all of these different kinds of animals and I would say reptiles, mammals, all of these, all of these things are created during this time frame. What? So lions and bears. Lions, bears, yeah. Tigers. Yeah, all of those things. And man, the 26th verse says, and God said, let us make, here we go. He said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle, and over the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. I gotta remember that the next time I see a snake, <laughs> I have to take dominion over it. So, let's look at this. The term uh, that God created man, he created him and he called him what? Adam, okay? And Adam's Adam, the word Adam is related back to earth to Adamai, A-D-A-M-A-H. Since man's body was formed from the elements of the earth. The term man is, when we look at it in Genesis and a lot of other places in the Bible, it is a generic term that includes both male and female. So, don't get hung up. Genesis 5.2 says, Male and female were created to them, and he blessed them, and he called their name Adam. Called their name Adam. Okay. Yeah. Pick that out. Called their name Adam, and in the day when they were created, man was made both, man was both made and created. So this level of Creation in reference to man then does not refer to the, the soul quality of man because in verse 26 it says, let us make, so we are created and made or created by the creator. And how are we created? Yeah, say it louder. In, in his image. We're, we're made to be like him. Right? How is that different than other things that he created? Well, they're not made in his image. They're made by him, but not like him. Exactly. So when God created or God made angels, whether they were archangels, uh, the seraphim, or any of those angels, did he create them like him? He didn't. He didn't create the angels to be like him. Okay? But he wanted man he created man for a specific purpose. The angels worship him around the clock, except those who decided to go a different direction and follow after a fallen angel. Yes? But we gave angels a choice, right? Had to have. Huh? Had to have. Because of 
It says a third of the angels fell with Lucifer. So they had a choice. But they were not created from all indications in his image. Okay? So, we have this creation of man. Uh, created speaks of something that was never before. And made is the production of an idea. When we go back and look, back in 1953, DNA was first discovered. Clear back, yeah, no, clear back in 1953. And I don't think they knew a whole lot about what it was, but they come across it and they realize, man, that's that's different, that's unusual. Uh, but what we need to understand is that DNA is more than chemistry, way more than chemistry. It's it's made up of trillions of cells. Our bodies are made up of trillions of cells. Okay. Well, it's always been out there. They just didn't find it. Right. It's always been there. They just didn't know. And think about how much things have advanced since 1953. Yeah. So, a lot. Some good, some bad. Sometimes I think maybe more bad than good. But it, it was found back then. So, inside of these cells is the DNA that's in these cells. And when you go to look at DNA, you've got to be able to read DNA and you have to understand the language of DNA. Okay? And when you simply look at where I'm actually headed to a point, in case I've got you confused yet. So when you, yes? Before you get us confused. <laughs> <laughs> I might be too late. Any more than I don't we are here. Well, okay, I'm, in, I'm still on this DNA thing. If it's always been in there, I mean, if it's always existed, and God created it to exist, then all of a sudden, you have all these years in between here, and then all of a sudden in 1953, it was found, or whatever. Why did God allow for it to be before now? Well, I think it's technology again and the ability for them to look closer at things with more powerful microscopes and really well, we dive in. Well, technology, though. Well, it, it, God has always has a time. And, and maybe, and well, maybe, yeah. I was going to say, though, in, in yeah. respect to that, then why was it technology before now? I mean, that's what I don't mm -hmm. understand. We have all this stuff that makes life better for us, or well, let's well let's think of think of it this way: if all this technology was available at the time that the Pilgrims came over, I'm not sure this country would have ever gotten to this stage. We would have. I mean, they had a diff enough, difficult enough time. It's in the last day, potential go through the pro of knowledge, show the Yeah. So, we've been living in the last days for a long time. You know, some of them was fulfilled when the yeah. came the nation That's right. back in the 40s. I do have a question. I looked up DNA. So it, it has a lot about genetics and things like that, okay? So I'm going to be personal. My grandkids have a genetic. Yes. So if God knows all this, Create what now? Um, with with the genetic uh, order and effect. Defect. My, I mean, yeah. Well, environment has a role in all of that. Yeah, so, in my, I will give you my opinion. Okay. It doesn't mean nothing. Well, that's good. Okay. 
There was nothing driving them to any uh, disease, infirmity, affliction. After the fall, the entire landscape of the world changed. Not only did death come upon the earth, but disease and everything else came upon the earth. Um, and then you have your genetic malfunctions, genetic imperfections, etc. Now, I, I'm going I'm to jump ahead here for a second. I don't know where Rick is planning on going. <laughs> so if I jump ahead and derail his train, I hope I don't. But in my opinion, again, the DNA gives an overwhelming amount of proof of God's existence because of the coding involved. And what what amazes me is how much we've discovered since 1953 and now how much we're wanting to forget about what we've discovered about DNA since 1953. It's amazing to me too that <clears throat> America didn't begin when the pilgrims came across. I mean, <clears throat> it's been here no. long as you know everything else on earth, but. There, there are First well, Nations, yes. Yeah, it's like things didn't begin just when America began. They, they've actually, this isn't where I was going, but <laughs> the, the DNA of, of First Nations, some First Nation tribes within uh, North America, when they've looked at them, they are very similar and go back to Middle Eastern Hebrew descent DNA. They're very close in comparison. Yeah. Oh. Yes. So. Well, you remember, you know, the, the Pisces and the, I don't know what, the Becca, you know, mm -hmm. the school thing, you know, they had a deal in there where, you know, Noah's three sons, well, they migrated this way and one migrated this way and one some of them migrated south, you know, they had. Sure. That's what they taught them in school. You remember yeah. that? Yeah. So, continuing with the, with the DNA piece, and, and where, where I really wanted to hit was this, so you have an answer. Okay. The DNA is, is, is important stuff, because it actually has so much information in it, it volumes of information. People have tracked their family members down by it. People have been sent to prison by it. Mm -hmm. uh, all of those things. But when you, when we start to look at this, and this is where some of this information is misused. Okay? So, 96% of human DNA and by, by a general term, I'm going to use this, eight, are have same markers, ninety six percent. Okay. What they don't tell you is how they're reading the DNA. They don't tell you is that you can have these markers, but it's how the markers are placed in sequence. Okay. It's like going to a library and having volumes of one book in one section of the library in a volume of a similar book in another section of the library and yeah. saying they're all the same. They're not. They're, not. No, they're not. When you take them out of sequence, it changes everything. Mm -hmm. Okay? It is the same thing as you could put this in the same comparison as 
if you added or didn't add a comma in a sentence, does that not change the meaning of a sentence? Yes. 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 That's what I keep hearing anyway. <laughs> it does by, by a lot, right? So when you, when you look at the pieces of DNA and start looking at these, it's, it's and we find that they're not identical matches. They may have similar components, but we're not identical. That's the difference. And that's where we have the problem of people beginning to talk about evolution. They find these markers and they start to look at these things and go, well, but it's not the same, okay? So, uh, Roxy's Toyota has a lot of the same components that your Dodge Ram pickup does, but they ain't the same. The parts aren't interchangeable. Right. Right. That's good. That's good. That's very good. Yeah. Well, if you follow the news, that's how they <clears throat> identified that guy that invented that feature, the DNA. Yeah. Sure. If it's 96% now what do you say about the 96 percent the markings are uh, the markings are 96 percent match uh, and why did they say uh, like it's 99.999 percent that you're a match if it's really only 96 percent no this is this is the 96 percent markings of our dna human dna to that of an ape oh oh I'm and see eight. every Every single person has a different piece of DNA. My, now, if you, were to, if you were to pull everybody's DNA in here, you'd find that Dave and Dan and I and sister, well, probably not sister O's, but the three of us, our DNA, would be similar. Not exact, but we have some of the yeah. same markings because we're in the same bloodline. Mm -hmm. Okay? But there wouldn't be a perfect match. Even identical twins are not a, how about that? Even identical twins are not a perfect match. Because every single person has their own identity and God created that perfect identity even inside of, even inside of our, our DNA to, to make us an individual. A specific individual. That, folks, is awesome. It is awesome. I don't know about you. It gives me. First thought enough about you and I to make us specifically different than everybody else in the entire world. Can I, can I use a different analogy that maybe might help? Sure. Is that all right? So if, and just take this whichever way you want to go with it. If the Lord's Library was the ape, and Ottawa Library had 96% of the books that it has, but it's completely different than Ottawa could be the human, even though it has 96% of the books, it's arranged, they're arranged differently, they're in different sections, they're in different areas. So if you go to Lawrence Library and look for a book, you're not gonna be able to go to the Ottawa Library and find it in the same shelf in the same place, because it's different. So that's the difference between DNA between an ape and a man. They may have a lot of the same books, but they're in different sections, or in different areas, they may be even cataloged differently. Yes, and my disclaimer, Lawrence, sorry, <laughs> Lawrence. So, so my disclaimer is I am not a chemist, I don't teach chemistry, I don't teach biology, I am not an expert in either one of those fields. Yes, amen. Just as a disclaimer, I'm doing the best that I can to explain areas that are beyond my beyond my level of, of comprehension, 
Because I, I mean, I took chemistry, but it was a long time ago, and I struggled then. Yeah, all of this when you start to think about how marvelous it is, and he said, and he's creating man in his or our image, as in he and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And that's, folks, see, I was asked this question a few weeks ago. I was asked the question about, so, did God just create us to create disciples? Well, no. Because the answer is, when God created man, and he created man different than the angels, he did it for a specific purpose. Because he wanted relationship with man. He wanted man to have relationship with him. That's the difference. It is more that we're not robots. We're all given choices. We're all given choices in life. Do or don't do. That's what's cool. Amen? Amen. All right. I apologize to those of you online. I uh, know we don't know what's going on, but it could be a number of things with people using the cell tower and overloading it to uh, different, different things. But we're glad that you hung with us. And let's pray. Father, we thank you for this evening, God, and for this uh, study of your word and understanding. God, you're, you're an awesome creator. Your, your work is magnificent, God, in what you've, what you've done. And God, it's a marvel. And man's still trying to figure out what you did. We're still trying to understand some of the things that you created. And how you did it. And God, even with all the knowledge that we've gained, we're still clueless, I think, as to what you've done and how you've created all of these things. And the perfect way that you did it. And God, we know that there, there's just no way that all of this happened by an accident. We know it happened at the hands of an all-powerful, all-loving, wonderful creator who created it all and spoke it all into existence. And Father, we thank you. Go with us. Keep your hand of safety and protection upon us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen. 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 amen.